The entire contents of one bottle go in the water, minus basically drinks for the captain and the first mate. Is so that, that, that would be you, you and me. So. First mate. And then everybody has their cups, right? Yes. See, si, senor. We're gonna go. Up, we're gonna go on deck. So. Okay. We're gonna be naming our boat today. Out here with a couple friends and having a, some champagne and doing the tradition to uh, pay homage to Neptune. So, there's a couple little things I gotta read to uh, properly name name our boat. <laughs> oh, mighty and great ruler of the seas and oceans, to whom all ships and we who venture upon your vast domain are required to pay homage, we implore you in your graciousness and take unto your records and recollection this worthy vessel hereafter and for all time known as Somnium, guarding her with your mighty arm and trident and ensuring her of safe and rapid passage through her journeys within your realm. In appreciation of your munici munificence, disp dispensation, and in honor of your greatness, we offer these libations to your majesty and your court. All right, and then we have this champagne bottle and we minus one, for the one, one glass for the first mate and one glass for me. And we will now be pouring her into the sea from east to west. The next step was to appease the gods of the winds. I had to address each god, Boreas, Zephyrus, Eurus, and Notus, gods of the north, west, east, and south winds, respectively, and pour champagne over the side of the boat that faced the direction of the god that I was addressing. Hey guys, we're out on the boat this morning. It's about, I think, 8 a.m. and we are going to be taking down the mast. Uh, Jordan noticed something that kind of alarmed him about one of the shrouds. There's either a scratch or a crack. I think it's a scratch um, on one of the bases of the shroud. Yeah, the, the actual fork on the backstay, and I'll, I'll show you right now. So you look here, the fork of the backstay right here. There's that which I kind of noticed. I, 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 Randy thinks it's a scratch, maybe from, um, you know, could could have been made, maybe when the tiller broke, or maybe, you know, from, from this cotter pin or something. Uh, personally, I've been wanting to replace all the standing rigging on, on the rig, and just to, you know, if we get into heavy weather and everything like that, I just don't want uh, anything bad to happen. And I know the, the standing rigging is pretty, pretty old and it looks like only one of the shrouds has been replaced before. So I think the rest is original and I know you're supposed to only, you're supposed to replace the standing rigging about every 10 years. It's about a 30 year old boat. So it's well overdue. Um, so we're going to be doing it and we're going to try to take the mast down today and hopefully that goes well. Hopefully that goes well. So we're going to try to figure everything out. We, we've never done this before. First things first, we got to get the bimini down. And as you can see, Bird left a present on the top of it for me. Right, he's up there trying to get the solar panel off. Oh my gosh. What? Uh, this is a perfect lesson in, um, oh crap, I can't get a word. <laughs> as you can see, our bimini has <laughs> faded. This is this cheap, uh, cheap fabric that we got yeah. from, uh, Amazon, as you can see, it's faded a good amount because once we took the solar panel down, that's the original color. Once we got the bimini 
top down and stowed away. The next step was the mainsail and the boom. Anyone watching notice that some of those were zip tied? So this knife was something that my grandfather left me when he passed. Um, it is actually a sailor's knife. Uh, it's an old case. I think it's like a 1930 something. Uh, it's got blade right there. I gotta get it sharpened or whatever you need to do if you need to cut the lines. And then it's got a knot breaker. It's perfect for doing what we're doing right now. thing to remove before the mask came down was the jib. I got that one on film. That looked like a snook or a red. Definitely a big fish around here. Uh, going for its morning breakfast. There it is again. So while I was trying to catch a big snook or red or something, I missed Randy taking down the jib. And I was unsuccessful. But the sails folded nicely. But the sails folded nicely. So on this O'Day 272 and on a lot of boats uh, like this, they have through deck chain plates for their shrouds so the upper and lower shroud go to the single chain plate right here which goes through the deck and attaches to the bulkhead underneath now the problem with that and structurally it's it's a good it's a good design but the problem with that is if these chain plates aren't pulled uh, and rebedded every year water can start getting in down through the deck and start rotting the bulkhead down there and if that bulkhead rots then it this whole thing is gonna fail down there and the whole mass could come down. Now a lot of times uh, it won't, but it's not really a risk I'm willing to take, so I want to replace all my standing rigging, replace all the chain plates, and make sure that my bulkhead, I'm pretty sure it's not rotted, but I want to make sure that it's not rotted and make sure everything's 100% sound before we do any long distance trips on this boat. So I'm taping the threads on the turnbuckles, and what this is going to do is gonna, it's going to let the uh, riggers know when the mast, when the rigging was tuned, where where it sat on on the rigging, so it they can make the rigging accordingly. Like if it was, if this is, might be a little too short, they can make it a little longer. If it's a little too long, they can make it a little shorter. So it'll let them know where it was when it was tuned last. So a local guy that came by and that knew what he was talking about. His name is Steve. Was giving us some advice about stepping this or unstepping this mast and he was saying that we took out we took this out right here which doesn't really do anything but he said we need to leave this bolt in and it should just hinge back once we release the mainstay so that's what we're gonna try to do just a side note we're both fighting a cold right now so you might have noticed a lot of sniffling in this video so please pardon that and also in the last video I was already starting to get sick so sorry for any pouty faces in that video as well We kept the shrouds tightened and loosened the backstay. We then attached our spinnaker halyard to a bow cleat as a temporary forestay while we detached it. 
we ran a line from the port cockpit winch through a block we attached to the bow roller and tied the end of the line to the forestay. This was so we could slowly lower the mast backwards from the cockpit. So here's a perfect depiction of what happens when you read a ton of advice from sailors and decide to ignore it all. As we were lowering the mast, I foolhardily thought I could stabilize it myself on the way down. The weight was not a problem, but the issue arose with when the mast started swaying from side to side and there was nothing I could do to stop it. Take my fumbling around here as proof that when lowering a mast, you either need more than two people or a structure built specifically for stabilizing the mast on the way down. We need to think about this for a second. As you can see, we dropped the mast on a pole. Luckily, nothing major was damaged, but we did end up cracking a small piece off of our mast step, however. The piece helps the mast hinge backwards when lowering it, and I'm fairly certain it's not structurally significant, but I could be wrong, so I'll have to do a little more research on that. A lot worse could have happened, and it didn't, so we're very grateful for that, and we learned our lesson, so next time we take down the mast, we're going to do it right. Next time on Sonium, I take a hacksaw to our force day, and I go rigging shopping.